Hi, welcome back. In this lecture, we will study about kinematic model. So, let's start. We want the manipulator to perform a specific task. It can be drilling, welding, or simply picking and placing an object. To do these tasks, the end effector or the tool is required to follow a planned trajectory. Now, to follow a planned trajectory and to position and orient the end effector, it is required to control the position of each and every link and joint of the manipulator. So, a kinematic model describes the spatial position of joints and links and the position and orientation of the end effector. That is, the position of joints and links and the position and orientation of end effector are defined in a kinematic model. Okay. We have already studied that the number of degrees of freedom a manipulator possesses is the number of independent variable required to completely specify its position and orientation in space. In a manipulator, each joint has only one degree of freedom. So, the degrees of freedom is equal to the number of joints. Moving further, the lengths of a manipulator are numbered outwardly, which means a mobile base is numbered as link 0. As shown in the figure, first moving body is numbered as link 1 and the last link that is having the free end is numbered as link n. It can be any number. This last link is the end effector. Okay. The joints in a manipulator or a robotic arm are numbered in the similar way. That is the joint 1 between the link 0 and link 1 and joint n between link n minus 1 and link n. Remember, number starts from 1, not 0 in the joints. The first joint is joint 1, not joint 0. In a manipulator, a coordinate frame is attached to every link. And in the previous lecture, we have already studied that position and orientation of frame i can be described by frame i minus 1 using a homogeneous transformation matrix. Now, before studying kinematics, we need to understand some terms related to lengths and joints. Every joint of a manipulator has an axis. Look at this link. It has axis that is i minus 1 and axis i at both of its ends. AB is the common normal to these axes. That is the angle of AB with both axes is 90 degrees. Length of this common normal between the two axes is known as the link length. The link length is denoted by AI. Now, the second term is link twist. It is the angle between projection of axis I minus 1 and this axis I. So, these two parameters AI and alpha I are the link parameters and are constant for every given link. These remain constant, they do not change. Okay, next we have the joint distance. For link I, we have common normal AI, which intersects axis I minus 1 at point 1. For link I minus 1, we have the common normal AI minus 1, which intersects again the axis I minus 1 at point 2. The distance between the point 1 and point 2 is known as the joint distance. And the angle between these two common normals of the two lengths measured about the axis I minus 1 is joint angle. So this angle is joint angle. The joint angle theta i is the rotation about axis I minus 1 needed to make the normal parallel to one another. Okay. These two parameters di and theta i are joint parameters. Now, for the two links connected by revolute or the prismatic joint, the relative position of these links is measured by displacement at the joint, which is either the joint distance or joint angle. The displacement of the joint is measured by the joint distance or the joint angle. A one degree of freedom requires only one variable. So, out of the two parameters, that is di and theta i, 
only one is used to measure the displacement of the joint and the other remains fixed other is constant so out of di and theta i one is fixed and other is variable it depends upon the situation now consider an example in this first figure the links are not twisted which means the two common normals will intersect the joint axis at same point so di is equal to 0 so here the displacement of the joint is measured by theta i or the theta i is variable in revolute joint in the second figure the common normals are already parallel so theta i is equal to 0 and di is the variable for prismatic joint so joint displacement variable is denoted by q i this qi is equal to theta i for revolute joint and this qi is equal to di for the prismatic joint okay moving further the relation between the joint variables and the position and orientation of the end effector is the kinematic model in the kinematic model the joint variable and the position and orientation of the end effector are defined the kinematic modeling problem is split into two types now if we are given with the joint link parameters and we have to find the position and orientation of the end effector then this is known as forward kinematics this is the first type of kinematic modeling problem okay and inverse of this that is if the position and orientation of end effector is given and we have to find the set of corresponding joint variables then this is known as inverse kinematics again if we are given with the joint link parameters and we have to find the position of the end effector then this is known as forward kinematics and inverse of this if the position and orientation of the end effector is given and we have to find the set of corresponding joint variables then this is known as inverse kinematics so that was all for this lecture in the next lecture we will study forward kinematics in detail